Someone named a wine after to, to capture the geek market, 1337. How cool is that? Now, the geeks in the audience know what 1337 means. That means elite. Now, this still doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you think of the word elite, that's what it comes from. So one is the L, three is the E, T is the seven. There's this whole elite speak vocabulary where you use letters as numbers. So that's where it came from. So I thought, well, they didn't do it, so I will. I'm at the checkout. I'm on GoDaddy. I buy, the, I buy the URL. So right there, that's where 1337 wine comes from. Um, I do reviews on there. Right now, reviews are kind of suspended uh, just because I don't have a lot of time for that. But I have done about 140 reviews of wine, mostly $10 range wine. And I just give you my thoughts about it. I may like it. I may not. I like most of the wine that I drink. I like wine. Um, <laughs> I do. I really like it. Uh, but also an education part, and this is really where a lot of this came from, the idea of wanting to have a website. I had a website called Sommelier in Training. It was on a blogger. I didn't really do anything with it. But this the whole point of this website is to get myself and my wine knowledge a lot better, a lot better to eventually become a sommelier. Right, so next slide. Alright, so now how do we get the message out? So we all know about Twitter, right? So we're not going to talk about Twitter itself, other than I started the Twitter account um, and I got that going. We're also going to talk about Facebook being public, video sites, and community sites. So this is what we're going to cover. Next slide. Twitter. So how do you build your brand on Twitter? Well, you can do the old-fashioned way. I did that. I still do that. You go. You communicate with people. You can't just be an Autobot. You can't just sit there and just post, 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 and say, come to my website, come to my website, come to my website, which really Twitter is a lot about that. But it's, you also need to communicate with other people. You need to have a conversation with people. Um, so you look for keywords. If you know how to do Google, if you know how to use Google correctly, then you can use Twitter correctly. If I just if I just enter and whine for the Twitter search, unfortunately, I don't just get about that, that goodness that comes from grapes. 
What I get will also be a thing called the Wine, which is an emulation program that allows you to run Windows on, a, on another computer. So Twitter being the home of geeks in the beginning, you get a lot of guys talking about Wine and that asset. So if I, if I do a keyword search on Wine, it's not going to work out. So you have to be more specific in your keyword searches. Well, that's great, but I have a day job too. I'm a restaurant manager. I don't have time to sit at my computer 10 hours a day at my restaurant because I have to be on the floor interacting with my guests. So I use automation a lot. So uh, we use, I use TweetSpinner. There's an automated keyword search and that's to try to find other people to follow. And there's also auto-tweeting. So go to the next slide. The account costs $15 a month. You get a lot of things on this. You can also add more and more Twitter accounts to it to your one account. I have the one. I don't care about the Mars 8 trying to grow my followers. It doesn't matter to me on that. But with, uh, <coughs> with TweetSpinner, and it's going to be hard to see in the back, but you have a bunch of keywords you can use. You can be as specific as you want. You can have phrases. You can even try to... I have it at the very bottom. You can't really tell. But I have a few well-known people on Twitter like Gary Vaynerchuk. If somebody mentions his name, I want to follow that person. If somebody mentions Robert Parker, a very well-known wine uh, reviewer, I want to follow that person. Hopes that they'll follow me back. If they don't follow me back really quickly, TweetSpinner will say, okay, we're not going to follow them. Now, this doesn't mean that they don't have anything interesting to say, but if they don't follow me back on this type of account, well, then maybe they're not interested in what I'm talking about. Go to the next slide. It's not just a blind following of people. You can, there's a bunch of settings that are open to all of them, but the idea is that you can really, really drill down to what type of people you're looking for. It's a, it's a way to try to eliminate the the robots on Twitter to try to find real people, try to find people that uh, you can even go, we go to the next slide too. You can even find uh, people just in San Antonio. So say you have a San Antonio blog and you don't, you don't care about anyone outside of this area, you can target people that are just in a certain location. I don't really use that because it's a global brand, but it's something you can do. I right, go to the next one. Auto tweets. Now this is controversial because you want there to be a person behind the tweet, right? And that's why I do make sure I tweet under 1337 Y. But when I'm here on stage or I'm at work and I want to talk about, hey, watch my new review, or hey, I've got a new sommelier school posting, I can't really do it when I'm at work. Also, I have people that follow me in Australia, in China, in England, in other time zones other than our time zone. And I want them to know when I post something. So when I'm sleeping at 4 in the morning, when I get home at 3, uh, I want them to be able to see that. So I don't do a ton of auto tweets. As you can see, if you look up here, there's only four tweets that are active right now. And I tweet them, and th those show up about maybe I don't know, six times a day. I mean, six tweets a day that I probably do. I'm not like Fox News or CNN or BBC that tweets, like someone said, 10 tweets at a time, and then they keep doing that. I, I spread them out. So some of them are spread out every nine hours, some are every 17 hours. But what you can do is, besides that, you can see up there there's brackets inside the tweets. We'll go to the next slide on that. We have lists. So in this one, what I did is I used this one. There's four entries on this list. And inside that, there's also brackets. You can embed these lists. What this does gives you randomness. It allows you to make your tweets don't look as robotic as um, they could be. The other thing about this is Twitter does not like spam. They don't like duplicate tweets. And TweetSpinner makes sure you don't do that. Matter of fact, TweetSpinner tweet does not want you to be a spammer. If you are, they will cut your account off. So they want people to use it in a, in a good way, not just to blast tweets out. All right, next one. All right, so what do I use on my computer? Because I'm in front of my computer sometimes, or I'm on my iPhone, I want to tweet with people live, I don't want to just have the auto tweets going on. I use Tweety for Mac. This is one, the reason I put this on here, nobody really talks about Tweety when we do all these uh, things. They all talk about TweetDeck, and TweetDeck is wonderful if you have time to sit in your computer a lot. But I like to have real estate on my, on my desktop. I like to have Twitter off to the side, and then I can work on a review, or I can surf the net doing research, or, or just being on the computer. Well, what it allows me to do is to see multiple accounts. Like I said, I have two accounts that I use a lot. I have a couple other ones I don't really use, but I've got a bunch of Twitter accounts. So I can see when things are coming in. Um, I can see my mentions, my DMs. I can also, not that it's a big thing, but 
I quickly can see if somebody follows me back. That's really on my personal accounts and my 1337 wine account. If I see a tweet from them and I'm not really interested in following them anymore, I can at least see if they follow me back because to be a good Twitter citizen, it's good to follow someone that follows you, right? If they don't follow me back, then I'm like, oh, I'm going to unfollow them. Um, the only thing I don't really like on Tweety is you can only have one search window. It's the same window for everything. So it's your mentions or your DMs or the Twitter stream. Same thing for your search. It's not like TweetDeck, which is really cool about that. You can have multiple uh, searches. So if you're doing keyword searches, like I want to search about Cabernet Sauvignon, I want to search about Merlot or whatever, I can have multiple searches. So I can't do that with Tweety. Um, if you go to the next slide. This is just an example of what the desktop looks like. And you can see there's these blue dots up here. That tells me when I have a mention or a, or a direct message. Go to the next one. And you can tell it's 54 degrees that day. All right, Facebook. I use Facebook as an extension of Twitter. Again, like with Twitter, I have two accounts. I have a personal account, so if you want to know about me, you can follow me on Facebook. But if you want to know about the wine side, you can follow me on that. In every tweet that I do, auto tweet, goes to Facebook. There's an application called Selective Twitter, or Selective Tweets. Every time I have a hashtag FB in there, it sends it to Facebook so that if I tweet about something, whether it's auto or live, it will go to Facebook. It won't show every single tweet. I tried that on my personal account, and people hated it because I tweet like 40 times a day on that account. Um, so they really did not need to know every time I wanted to do something. Um, but Facebook to me is a different audience than Twitter. We talk about Twitter a lot, and it's great, and probably a lot of you have a Twitter account. But there's a lot of people that have Facebook, and they don't have Twitter. They don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't have time for it. And they sit inside of Facebook. It's like this ecosystem. It's kind of like AOL in the old days. You sat on AOL, and that was your portal to the internet, and people thought that was the internet. Well, Facebook, they sit on there. So you put the post, okay, come to my website, or put the post, hey, I'm trying this out, I'm going to try this wine, or I'm going to be presenting a bumper. Um, but the other thing is that uh, I can post my videos directly to Facebook. So when I do a review or I do a sommelier school, they don't have to leave Facebook. Now, is that the smartest thing to do, to not have people come to my website? Not necessarily, but I'm not here to make money on the website. I mean, I do have ads on there. If you click on it, you buy something cool. But I'm not here to make money on it, at least not on the website. But that allows them to actually watch the video because sometimes you go, ah, I don't want to leave Facebook. I don't want to leave the website at all. You can watch the videos. The other thing about Facebook that I find very, uh, very powerful is invites and uh, creating events. How many of you on Facebook here saw the event because of Facebook? You know, saw the bumper event. I mean, because Donna sends it out, you have that invite. Come to bumper. You know, you can use the same thing for like, I'm going to have a wine tasting. Come to my wine tasting. Or I'm going to be doing a live stream. You know, maybe I'll do a live stream with uh, some wine tasting or do a discussion on Ustream. You can send these things out on Facebook, which is a little bit different to do that than it is with Twitter. Next slide. All right, then there's in real life or IRL. All right, so that's coming to Bumper. That's going to tweet us. We talked about that. I mean, I'm a real person. I'm not the robot, okay? You can also go to wine tastings. That's for, for me specifically for wine. I hand out my little move card. If you haven't seen them, they're really cool. They're very small. They have a logo on it. It's awesome. Um, so you go to wine tastings and you say, hi, I'm Mark with 1337 Wine. I do, a, I do a video. I mean, I have videos on my website, so come by and see it. Or you go to wine shops. Hey, I'm going to buy some wine from you. Every video I do with a wine review, I say, where did I, get, where did I buy the wine from? Usually it's World Market, or HEB, or Specs, or Gabriel's. Those are the ones that I usually use a lot. But outside of San Antonio, most people don't really know who they are, except for World Market. Those are all local. But at least I'm giving those people props. And then I can tell them, hey, if you got something good, give me a call, because I may want to review it. All right, so the big part about the website is video. We're going to go real quickly through all these. All right, so the next one. YouTube. Now, I mentioned YouTube because it's the one that everybody knows. I send all my videos to YouTube. Unfortunately, up until recently, they have a 10-minute time limit, which means some of my videos don't do so well over there. You send it to them, and it doesn't happen. They just recently changed it to 15 minutes. Scott, the GM over here, just told me he's been getting a lot of calls the past couple weeks because he's all of a sudden a star on YouTube because I did an interview with him at an old sales by five pity party. We did a little wine review. He brought some food over and all that. 
And I'm pretty sure that video was over 10 minutes long. So somehow YouTube said, okay, we'll, we'll put it up there. So he's getting calls and he's, people are seeing him on YouTube. Um, the other thing about it is you can make your videos pretty much as large as you want. Two gigabytes is a lot of video. So you don't have to really worry about a file size limit. Uh, you can do HD content, but if you're going to use YouTube as your embedded player on your website, it's really limited in customization. You can do a little bit, but not a whole lot. Right, let's just go through the next couple here real quick. That's my ugly page. I don't really ever go to YouTube very often. Let's go to the next one. Alright, so I'm just going to mention Fiddler. Free account is pretty good. I use them in the past for my personal stuff. I use them for 1337 Wine. Um, really good community. So you can get really involved with there. A lot of people will be able to help you out. But uh, the problem I had with them is any video longer than 12, 14 minutes, I was having audio and video sync issues. Nowhere else did I have that problem with the exact same file. So something with them and how my content got up there really got screwed up. So I pretty much dropped them as my main player. But you can add your logo and you can customize your player a lot. Go to the next one. That's my page. It kind of tells me what's going on. You go to the next one. Alright, so this one, Vimeo, I only have it because I have an account there. Um, I only put this up there. The only way to really do anything good with them is to spend 60 bucks a year. I don't think it's worth it. But it's another way to get your videos out. Okay, the problem for me is that most of my stuff goes above the limits, so I can't really use them as a, as a good site. But it's something if you have, if you're not doing a lot of video like I do, it might be a good avenue for you. Next one. Vino is another one that I use. Again, I just send the content to it. I don't really log into it very often. Um, but it's good because you can get a free account and there's no limitations on it. Go to the next one. iTunes. Alright, so if you're going to do video or audio, think about it as a podcast. Jennifer and Lewis have Tech 20, right? And you guys are doing video now too, right? So they start off as an audio podcast. And it's a podcast, and you can find it on iTunes, right? Okay, because I subscribe to it. Um, but you can also do video on it. And it's a great avenue to send stuff out. So if you're doing audio or video, you want to get on iTunes. It's pretty simple to get on there, but the one thing I have to tell you is do not host your own files. So when you have your website and you're using whoever it is, I use Squarespace, which is a pretty good one, um, you don't want the files to stay on their servers because when people try to download it, it might be free for a while as far as when you pay per month for your access to it, but when they start downloading a lot of stuff off your website, the bandwidth, you start exceeding your limits and you have to pay a lot of money. So I use Blip.tv to store everything, which we're going to cover in just a second. Alright, do the next one. Alright, so now I'm on to video distribution. So how do I get my videos out? I don't go to every single little website and go, upload my video, upload my video, upload my video, because it's, I've got like 20 places that it goes to. So the bandwidth alone would just kill the internet connection of the house. So I use two, I use two distribution sites, Two Mobile and Blow.tv. So I'll do the next one. Two Mobile is pretty good. Um, free account. You have a 300 megabyte file limit. Now I was lucky enough that I put a bunch of videos on there at one point. And I called and I sent them an email saying, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna have some videos that are gonna be." Getting close to that 300 megabyte limit, might be going over. Is there any way I can get my limit increased? And they said, sure, I like your stuff. It's pretty good. Let's see what we can do. We'll raise it to 500 megabytes. I said, that's cool. They said, the only thing you got to do is you got you to put the logo on your website, which I did. So I got it for free. I forgot how much they told me it was would have cost me, but it would have been pretty expensive to get to the 500 megabyte limit. But if you ask nicely, sometimes I say yes. Um, you have 30 places you can send your videos to. If you're going to do video work, it's very important to get your stuff out there. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things I'm going to highlight. i2 TV. That's something where you can get a, uh, approval. You have to set up an account. But it sends, you, sends your videos to potentially cable networks. Now, there's none in San Antonio that this, that this applies to, but I've had my stuff shown on in California and Missouri. Those are the, the two ones that seem to be the, the biggest ones. And what happens is these cable, local cable companies, they look at the videos on iTunes TV and they go, hey, we want to show that one. So a lot of my stuff shows up there. iFood TV is very specific for food. That's something if you're, like if Lauren's going to do some video and you want to do iFood TV, it'd be a great place to do that. Um, Analytics are really basic. The problem with with the free account on 2Mobile is you can only send 100 distributions a month. So 
if you want to try to use all 30 places, you can only do about three videos a month until you run out of distributions. All right, next one. This is just a page in the analytics. Like I said, it's really basic. It just tells you how many views you got. All right, the next one. Flip.tv, this is what I like to use. Uh, the player you can customize pretty good. Um, there's no time limit on your videos. To you, to my use, my Sony A school, they're usually 30 to 40 minutes long. Uh, one gigabyte file limit, so you have plenty of plenty of uh, space for that. You can do 20 distribution, 20 destinations. Some of them are the same as two mobile, but there's no limit. I can do all 20 if I want and send them all out. The problem, the only, that's not a problem, but the only thing about these is some of these you have to be approved for. TiVo is one of them. I'm, I'm on TiVo. If you have to, uh, you have to submit your stuff, and TiVo will say yes or no. And it took about three to four months before I finally got the approval. Um, however, if you go to your TiVo box, if you have one, and you go to food and beverage under web shows, I'm the top show. It's not because I'm the best show, it's because it's 1337. I'm up here, Gary Vaynerchuk's down here. Why vibrate with the W? Unfortunately, the money that I make off of 1337 is down here. It carries through the roof. All right. Um, for now. For now. Right? <laughs> um, but you, I also use iTunes. This is how iTunes gets my videos. Um, when I upload it, I tell it, okay, set it up. It also will convert this stuff automatically so that if you want to watch it on my website, you can use your iPhone. So <laughs> it sets it up as a non-flash player too, which is great. Um, you have better analytics and two mobile. You can see a lot about your videos. You can see how many people fall asleep during your presentation. I mean, during your video. Um, <laughs> And there's also a revenue thing, so we'll go through that right there. All right, so this is my basic overview for the past 30 days. Um, I had 784 views of all my videos, all to be over the past 30 days, and uh, I made 29 cents. Like I said, I'm not trying to make money on this. Now, how this works is you have ads. You have pre-roll, post-roll, overlay. That's what I use. I still only made 29 cents. Um, you have mid-roll for videos 15 minutes or longer. Um, the, pr the thing about this is you have to be on the blip.tv player to get any revenue for ads. So on TiVo, there's no ads to click. It's just being played. So that's where the majority of my views come from, is from uh, TiVo. Let's go to the next slide. All time, I had almost 25,000 views. That sounds really impressive. I also made $12.97. $12.97, almost paid for lunch today. So again, like I said, I'm not trying to make money on this. It's more of a just get your name out type of thing. Go to the next one. Uh, more analytics, go to the next one. And more analytics. So I can say there's a lot of stuff you can get out of it. All right, so let's talk about wine specific stuff. So Lauren also alluded to this. You want to get onto your community uh, social networking sites. There's three of them that I'm on. I don't go on them a whole hell of a lot, but there's Wine Click, Wine 2.0, and Open Wine Consortium. They all pretty much look the same, unfortunately. The top two and the one on the bottom left, they all almost look the same. It looks like they use the same template because they all have, you know, add something, whatever. But what's great about going into your funny, your community, so if you're doing food, if you're doing wine, if you're doing anything else, techie, get onto these. Get onto these because these are communities that can really help you out. You can get a lot of advice. You can give advice and, and get your name out. The other thing that I've uh, made sure I was a member of is the Guild of Sommeliers. Uh, the only reason I'm on there, well, one of the reasons why I'm on there is because I got a free account for passing my introductory exam. They give that to you, which is cool. I don't know if they give you a free one if you go to the next level and pass it. I hope so. Um, but another community where you can get a lot of information for, for wine stuff. And then, of course, uh, the Society of Wine Educators is another one. But LinkedIn, that's something if you're trying to get your name out professionally, no one really talks about LinkedIn. I don't use it all the time, but my stuff's on there. You can get people that contact you. I mean, I've had recruiters call me for my restaurant job stuff because all my stuff, my resume is on there. But I've also had people call me about wine or, talk, or ask me about wine. I'm also members of communities in, in LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you know, it's not, you know, the, hey, I took the dog out for a walk type of stuff. It's more professional. And it's only really recently becoming more and more popular with professionals. All right, next one. All right, so it's still a hobby for me. Um, like Lauren, I don't, I have a day job. I don't make a lot of money off this. I would like it to be my profession. I would like wanting to be more of my profession. Uh, I'm working on that. 
But uh, it's more, you know, my day job is my priority. I have to balance all my all my time. When I do a sommelier school, it takes almost 18 hours to create one because of all the research, and then writing it, and then recording it, which actually is the shortest amount of time for everything. And then the computer, which I get to not sit in front of the computer, but the computer takes a long time to process the video. So if you're going to go into video, the biggest thing you have to remember is it's not instantaneous. It's not like writing a blog. You can write it, and you can rewrite it and rewrite it, but it's not going to take you 12 hours to do, probably, or hopefully. It takes a lot longer. Even audio, even audio will take a lot longer because you do have to make sure that the file is okay, and then you've got to upload it to somewhere, and then it's got to get distributed. Um, my reviews, they take about one to two hours. Again, it's mostly for research and computer time. The actual review is about 10 minutes long. The recording of the creation of the content is the easy part on video. It's all the prep work and all the post work that takes a lot of time. Um, and you're not necessarily going to be an overnight sensation. I mean, there's great stories, you know, with Chef Bizarro getting within a month, <laughs> right? You know, getting a lot of traction. But then you have other people that, you know, it doesn't, it takes a lot longer. Think of it as being a musician or an actor. It takes time to build that stuff. I mean, even Gary Vaynerchuk, who's like the big dog for video wine reviews, it took him years. Now, he's gotten some backing behind him to help him with that, but it's taken him a good two to three years to even have any type of celebrity status like he had. But once he started getting it, then he got agents and then he got all that other stuff. But it takes time. He, he, was, he still uses his office to do his wine reviews. So um, that's just something if you feel frustrated about blogging or about being on social networking, it takes time. If you're trying to make your profession, it takes time to do it. And next slide. And then this will be up on Bumper, I'll also have it on LinkedIn. Just all the links that I talked about. Um, so you can go to them, you can check them out if you're doing video or anything else. And that's all I got. Thank you. If anyone has any questions about social networking, wine, restaurants, anything? Or you just want to get out of here? Like that do. Go ahead. What kind of equipment uh, do you use to make your video? Well, you're looking at it. Okay, so I used the Kodak CI8. I had a flip cam, and it died after a year. And it cost too much money to send it to flip to fix it because of the battery. So I used social media to find out what should I buy. Now, I had already seen this, and I tested it prior. Um, Derek, uh, at Derek, I'm sure you all guys know who he is, hopefully. Uh, he had one. He did a wine review at a pity party with it. And, uh, and it was pretty cool. And I was kind of leaning towards it, but a lot of other people said, get it, get it, get it. Now, what I like about this, and I haven't used it yet, is that there's an audio input on there. So if you want to use a lavalier mic, so let's say I'm going to do a wine review back here, and I don't have this great sound system, and the camera's way in the back, I can't, I'm a pretty loud guy, but I can't shout loud enough for the camera to hear me, okay? So you can have the lavalier. That's what I wanted from a camera. Um, that's what I use. I have an iMac for the actual do the stuff. I use Final Cut Express um, to do all the editing. It's a little bit much, but iMovie will work just fine. It's just that I've used Final Cut for so long, it's what I'm comfortable with. Um, so that's what I use. Anything else? Yes? I just wanted to tack onto that as well for the, as far as the cameras go. The, the issue with a lot of the handheld cameras that we had was the microphone was so bad, like you were saying. Yes. And uh, the, the S95 that Non turned me on to, and I've, I've been loving just I've started shooting all of our videos straight from this. I set it on my desk and I just hit the button. And I used to set up like a whole tripod camera on the whole set. And the, the mics have come far enough that uh, I mean, you can use just about anything. And it's, and it's 720 PhD. And, I mean, as long as it's just you and it's not some big thing in the crowd room, I would record video here. You know, it wouldn't reach to him, but if it's just you and it's something, you can do it, you know, with something like that. Right. I mean, I sit about a foot and a half away from the camera when I do this stuff. Now, the flip camera, I have to say, the microphone was better. The sound was better on the flip cam. So I do do some audio adjusting in Final Cut. I use the EQ, and I also do now do some video adjusting to adjust the colors and the brightness and all that. I'm not a professional by any means, but I think they look a little bit better. But yeah, I shoot the 720p on there, so that does add more time to the processing, but it just looks better. Um, but you can shoot 1080p, which is just huge as far as files are. I don't really... I don't really recommend it too much, but uh, if you're just doing that type of close-up stuff, you're doing far away is pretty good. Anything else? Yes? So, what would you like to do next when it comes to social media? I mean, what would you like to see social media doing that you would 
Well, it's yeah. social media doing rather than what I want to do. Because I want to be the next Gary, Vay Gary Vaynerchuk. So when he when he when he decides to stop doing wine reviews, he can hire me a wine library and we'll all move back up to New Jersey, which I know Dad doesn't like. But we'll move back up to New Jersey, or we're all moving to Italy next year. But anyway, um, but uh, what I like to see social media do, um, I would like to see it be more encompassing. Um, to me, Twitter, I, I love Twitter, and I was one of those early adopters. I'm a geek, and I did it. And if I knew all of you three, four years, three years ago, whatever, and I talked to you about Twitter, your eyes are rolled in the back of your heads, because that's what all my friends did. They're like, oh, we don't understand Mark. And then over the years, they've all gravitated towards it. So I think with social media, I think we're, we're getting to the point where it's becoming more acceptable, it's more mainstream. Um, Twitter was, you know, kind of an indie band thing. You're like, it was cool to be on Twitter. All your friends, you know, all your good friends were on Twitter. It was a cool thing. And then all of a sudden, Ashton Kutcher got on there. <laughs> and now he's no cool anymore for the geeks. But I think now we're getting past that. And I've also started hearing celebrities starting to get off of Twitter, which that's fine. Kick them off because I don't follow any of them. Um, but uh, I think becoming more of that, just encompassing more people, and, and people are saying that Twitter is a communication device, and it's also an advertising medium. I mean, my auto tweets are like radio ads. That's what I look at Twitter as, on, on, the, on the professional side. But you also have to be human on it. Anybody else? Yes? What's your favorite local wine? Local wine. <laughs> well, I'll have to say I haven't had a whole heck of a lot of Texas wines. However, the ones I have had, um, and I don't want to use the word unfortunately, but because Becker is like the main one that everybody knows, and that's the one I've been exposed to the most, I do have to say that they are pretty good. Um, I had a good rosé last year from them. Um, the other Texas wines I've had were my favorites. Um, there's a Texas sweet wine from Twin Springs. Uh, just had watched the video again of that, and I talked about how it was like, you know, having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with it, which isn't a bad thing. There was New Jersey wine I had, it was great for peanut butter. Matter of fact, I ran, that's the other thing I do in the video. Sometimes I get up off camera and I go and do stuff, and there was one time I had to uh, get a print out from the printer, and I had my pajama bottoms on still. <laughs> had a nice t shirt or polo on, and then I said, ooh, shit, I forgot that. <laughs> and you can look, and so, was he, why is he had that scared look in his face? And I got up and you can see I run off to the side and I got my pajama bottoms on. Because hey, it's 10 in the morning. Yeah, I drink wine at 10 in the morning, why not? Um, I, actually, I taste it and spit it out. Go ahead. Have you tried Sister Creek? I've not had Sister Creek, no. I want to try that. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a ton out there of Texas wines I want to try. But there's a ton of, of other wines out there. And, what I'm hoping is that soon I will be in a better position to, to actually have better wines, just on a professional level, not necessarily for reviews, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Anything else? Cool, everyone's ready to get out of here. Oh, yes, go ahead. Um, actually, yes, I've had, okay, so this is what happened. I had this, Skype, I didn't, really use, I didn't really talk about Skype. Skype video is really great. I had had wine from Portugal sent to me. And then what I did is I had a Skype uh, tasting with the winemaker from Portugal. Um, there's a, I wish I remember the name of the program. Um, it's just called Video Recorder, I think, on the Mac. And what it does allows you to do split screen, which is great. So I can have my, me and the other person on the split screen and you're using, video, you're using video Skype to do an interview with somebody. That's something else that I should have put in there about videos. You can do interviews. Skype is one way to do it. Uh, there's other ways to do it, but Skype is a lot easier to get Skype on somebody else's computer. You can use their laptop. You know, I just, I just have, I literally bring the iMac downstairs and put it on the table, because that's the best computer I have. But um, uh, yeah, I've had winery send me stuff, and we do a, we do a virtual tasting. I've had winery from Washington. I've had a winery from uh, California. We've actually, she uses a custom crush facility called Crush Pad, crush pad um, where if you want to create your own wine, you tell them, I want grapes from here, and they make the wine for you. Anything else? Which wine goes with McRibbins? McRibbins? Oh, dude, I'm craving the McRibbins. 
I crave my ribs. Okay, so here's my recommendation for for wine. Merlot, yes, fucking Merlot. I <laughs> I will drink Merlot. Okay, I will. I will drink Merlot. Um, just because sideways, the whole Pinot Noir thing, I'm kind of on the Gary Vaynerchuk bandwagon. And yes, Pinot Noir is great, but it gave Merlot a bad rap. Merlot and Zinfandel. I think Zinfandel would be great because I think the spiciness with the spiciness of the barbecue sauce would be great. Right? <laughs> Thanks for the setups. I can talk about as well. Anyone else? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you.